I'm assuming so. All right. All right. Um, so it is 7 o'clock, and this is the regular uh, city council meeting for November 4th. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, just a friendly reminder, if you have electronic devices, cell phones, or et cetera, please put them on airplane mode or turn them off. And uh, next order is, uh, would you please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So welcome everyone, and for those of you watching on YouTube later on, I'm Lisa Whale and I'm the mayor. And to my left are council members Pam Mortensen, Mike Molitor, John Chamberlain, Shannon Bruce, and on the end we have our city engineer with WSB, Allison Falski, and then we have our city clerk, Chris Lindquist. Our director of administration is Cassandra De uh, Tabor. And then behind her, we have our public works superintendent, Gary Peters, with us this evening as well. And then to my right, we have um, city administrator, Mike Baroni, Brian Grimm, finance director. David Abel is our community development director. And then sitting in for Ron Beatty this evening is Andrew Biggerstaff. Welcome. Nice to have you back. He is with Kennedy and Graven and our attorney. And then on the end, last but certainly not least, we have our police of chief, um, chief police, Chief Paul Falls. So, again, um, with that, are there any uh, additions or changes to our agenda? I think we'll just have staff reports. And Brian, you had a staff report, so we'll add that. And uh, any other changes? Otherwise, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented with that one addition? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. So we don't have any special presentations this evening, and, and nobody signed up under persons to be heard, so we will move on to consent agenda items. They consist of approve our work session meeting minutes from October 7th, 2019, approve our work session meeting minutes from October 21st, 2019, approve our regular meeting minutes from October 21st, 2019, approve our claims, and E is approve a CUP for home occupation at 3751 Crane Island Court. And F is accept a donation of funds to purchase electronic speed signs for the police equipment. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A through F? I'd like to remove A and B, please. A and B, all right. That uh, leaves us with C, D, E, and F. Any, um, is there a motion to approve C, D, E, and F? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion has been made by Ms. Bruce and seconded by Ms. Tremperlin to approve consent agenda items C, D, E, and F. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So we'll move on to approve our work session meeting minutes from October 7th. Ms. Bruce? On page 5, um, Ms. Lindquist took the changes that I requested and incorporated them into the paragraph that starts off saying item 4, page 182. And um, all of that is fine. I think it, it, it reads fine. Thank you for making those changes. Um, we did inc she did incorporate the changes to the private wells and the green step cities and the rebate program in that paragraph. But um, it is just a technical thing. Item 5 and item 6 just need to be deleted because they were discussed and they were, they're addressed in that paragraph above it. So you might <clears throat> just want to change that paragraph above to say item four, five, and six, and then just delete that paragraph that says item five and item six. Madam Mayor, I, I would disagree with that because of the simple fact that when Eric was here, he said we will not be discussing items five and six because there was no, no action to be taken on them. So I do want that reflected in the minutes. Okay. I'd like to comment on that. Um, we did discuss private wells, and we did discuss Green Step Cities, and we made changes to them. And to say that we didn't discuss them isn't accurate. We did discuss them, and we made changes. <clears throat> 
So we uh, didn't really discuss whether we were going to um, do green step cities or not. We no. simply said that um, we don't have to have it in here. That we can do um, education. We can do educational components or other we things. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether they're in here or not. Um, we really didn't discuss private wells. We discussed um, whether or not we were going to do an ordinance pertaining to uh, water. Wells. Yeah, to water restrictions. Well, to say that there was no discussion on private wells and no discussion on Green Step Cities isn't accurate because there was discussion. Okay, what does the rest of the council feel? It does, it, it already says that in number four, I believe. It says the council directed staff to uncheck the boxes for the Green Step Cities program, private well ordinance, and the rebate program in table 28. Um, private wells, there was no need to, to address, not discuss, but address this item since the city does not intend to adopt an ordinance for water restriction on private wells. And number six, Green Step Cities, there is no discussion on it since the city is not a member of the Green Step Cities program. I think it, it pretty much addresses what we discussed. We discussed, I'm sorry, it, we discussed Green Step Cities and we discussed private wells and we made the changes in the paragraph above. Correct. It says the so council directed staff. That, <clears throat> that there was no discussion. I just, I don't understand. It doesn't say there was no discussion. It says there was it no does. need to address. It says there was no discussion on this item. For the private wells, it does not say there was no discussion. It says there was no need, need to, address. to address. That is two but different But we, we did address it, and we decided not to. We took the check, check boxes off doing the private well ordinance. By doing so, Eric Zweber, in a conversation I had with him, well, actually, David had with him after the fact, was, was the understanding that Eric would take those things out in the appropriate places that were also in the comm plan. I don't believe it was actually words were spoken to the effect of the, comp, of the implementation spreadsheet on page 280, 289 and on page 183. Those are words you typed to me. Those are not words that were spoken at the work session. We, I, we were all at the same meeting. Does, how, how does other council remember that conversation going? Maybe, maybe we need to listen to the audio. Well, I think, council, um, if you will, I think that maybe the clarification here on section four versus five and six is noting with Green Step Cities and the rebate that yes, the actual box checking piece of it was addressed, but the the discussion piece of implementation of cities or private wells, there wasn't a lot of elaboration in there. And because we don't do verbatim minutes, I think our discussion as a staff was, is there a necessity and a direction from the staff or from the council to elaborate further on five and six? Well, the I think the, I, I agree. I agree with that. And I also think, so we were addressing the seven uh, points that um, you had brought up. And so I think in page on item four, we're addressing those and we're saying this is what we did. The council directed staff, which we did, to uncheck the boxes for the Green Step Cities program, private well ordinance, and the rebate programs in table 28. And additional strategies uh, will be used to reduce water use and support wellhead protection template. Now, with item number five, we that's kind of captured in number four because we 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 then what he's simply saying is there's no need to address this item since the city does not intend to adopt an ordinance which we said in number f number four and I'm happy you made the changes in the paragraph above these are technical changes that just didn't make sense to have those say what they do if Someone thinks they need to be in there. That's fine. Yeah. I, again, I don't know. It that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. I don't understand it. So, but I'm not going to push it. 
All right. All right. Um, then on page 10 in the uh, October 21 work session minutes. What page is that? Because I don't have, I don't. Page 10 in our packet. Okay, but I don't it's have the very it last that page. So the work page set. three of three? Four yes, B. page three of yeah. three. Yep. Yes. Of four B. Um, Councilmember Molitor made a comment about possibly using the balance in the recycling fund to cover organic recycling costs for residents if and when it becomes required in 2022. And I didn't see that reflected in the minutes anywhere, and I, I think it should be because I think it's something we might want to consider. Um, it says in there there are further there was further discussion on organic recycling that will be required by the residents to use in 2022. But specifically, had an idea of using the balance in the recycling fund for that purpose. There was also discussion on staff salaries being charged back to the recycling fund when they are working on recycling issues. Yeah, that was a different matter. I don't recall. Do you recall, Mr. Molitor? I, off the top of my head, no, I didn't have to look at the video. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have one. In council, again, it's absolutely something that can be entered. I think, again, we're back to the balance of um, trying to highlight comments that are made and then again, not being verbatim. We don't have a, a stenographer, and so I think the, the goal with the minutes is just an overall capture. If, if you'd like to see that added in, and Councilmember Molitor, we're, again, we're more than happy to do it. I think it's just that balance for us as staff members from a time standpoint. Um, when minutes are being completed is is just trying to capture that bigger picture. And I'm, I'm not asking for verbatim. I, I just was asking for it. There was discussion about using the balance in the recycling fund to cover organic recycling costs for residents if and when it becomes required. In so I don't even remember that. I recall we talked about organic recycling. We said we don't have to do it right now. Um, well, perhaps we can so, go back and listen to it, and if it's there, put it in, and if it's not. Well, I would ask Mr. Molitor to weigh in on it since you're claiming this is something he said. Well, I, I, so. I did weigh in, and my, my comment, I'd I have to defer to what Shannon said. Uh, honestly, you'd have to pull the, the video. I, 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 honestly, I don't remember exactly verbatim what I said. Yeah. But so so my, my question here is, again, so the question is, and I think what staff is saying is, these aren't verbatim um, minutes there they capture the essence of the discussion and so what what they say is you know there was discussion on recycling and organics or whatever they're not saying that mr molitor said this or miss bruce said I this i didn't suggest that it was mr molitor I, that should be recorded as saying that and so we so the general discuss the, the general discussion was um, the recycling program the general discussion was um, um, organics <laughs> Um, Do you know what? I'm, I'm just never mind. Okay, it's, forget it. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else have comments? Okay. Otherwise, um, is there a motion to approve the um, October seventh work session meeting minutes as presented in our packet? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the October 7th work session meeting minutes um, as presented. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion passes for one. And then we're looking at October 21st, is that? No. Yep. Uh, work session meeting minutes from October 21st. Is there a motion to approve the October 21st work session meeting minutes as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion passes for one. Uh, Bruce dissenting, and the motion was made by Ms. Mortensen and seconded by Mr. Chamberlain. Okay. So 
We'll move on with the agenda. We have, I just want to make one comment. Um, we I accepted a donation of funds for the purchase of electronic speed signs for the police uh, department, and that was from Quick Trip. And I just want to um, give a shout out to them. Thank you for their very generous donation, and uh, very nice to have them in um, close to our community. I think they're uh, located in uh, St. Bonnie, but um, since we serve St. Bonnie as well, so very nice of them to do that. So hopefully, you will send them a very nice thank you letter. Thank All right, good. Um, so moving on to our business items, we have approved a professional services agreement and authorized plans and specifications for the North Branch ditch work. Believe me, Ms. Falski. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Before you this evening for your consideration is approval of a professional services agreement to complete plans and specifications for ditch work along North Branch Road. Um, this project came up um, with regards to the maintenance that is currently required along this road. Uh, Public Works Superintendent Peters has indicated that there's a significant effort um, expended on maintaining these ditches. So we are proposing to come in with a project um, to go and uh, regrade these ditches and uh, remove material that has filled in the ditches. An approximate location is shown on the graphic within your project packet, pardon me, within the agenda packet, um, with the exact extents and removals um, that would be identified through the design process. Through the, um, as indicated in the, the proposal, um, we, we have indicated that, um, identified that a, a variance would be needed um, because MSA construct, municipal state aid construction funds are proposed. Um, and the reason for the variance that we see at this time is due to um, the, the paving requirement for a road that has over 300 vehicles per day. This road currently has, um, from the last counts, was um, 365 vehicles today. So um, with, with this, the volume being just over that threshold, uh, we propose to bring this to a variance board um, in early December to see if the, um, the, the board would consider a variance situation to use construction funds on a road that does not meet the paving requirement for this particular route. Um, so we would, we would uh, bring that forward prior to doing any design work on this project. That being said, we are also proposing to, if the council approves um, this agreement this evening, to bring forward um, the, the survey work that would be necessary to complete the project. And the reason being is we'd like to get the survey crew out there before the snow um, ground cover um, is out there so that we can get some accurate uh, volumes on removals, because that, and that's important. Um, in that we need to determine what type of project, what scope of project um, bidders would be looking for with such a project. So um, all that information is included in the uh, matrix that's in, uh, appended to the proposal. Um, again, design services would not, uh, would not begin until um, after a state aid variance is, is acquired. Um, and I also wanted to speak a little bit to the design components of this. While it's a ditch maintenance project, there's certainly some components that need to go into it in addition to the survey, um, that being um, the cross-section of the, the, the side slopes and the bottom of the ditches. And there's also a significant permitting effort that would be necessary with this project uh, because a portion of this road is within the floodplain. So we did budget um, quite a few hours uh, for um, it would be Minnehaha Creek Watershed District as well as MPCA so that um, the, the project could be um, permitted ap appropriately. So um, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that the council may have with this proposal. Yeah, Go Mr. Mallader. Um, so just so I understand the variance, is the variance simply due to the fact, well, two, two pieces, gravel road and volume count, or is the design standard different for gravel versus paved? The state aid requirement is that a state aid route shall be paved if the volume exceeds 300 vehicles per day. And since we are at 365 vehicles today on the gravel road, we, we propose that 
um, we're going to request a variance from that. Because they would want us to pave it. Got it. I understood that. Yeah. Okay. So then my next question, since that didn't, okay, I understand that. If we, and I'm not suggesting that we do this, but if we were to pave the road at some point, would we have to redo the ditch work to meet a higher standard than what's needed for gravel? That's a great question. Um, I, I don't know that answer at this time because um, state aid design requirements, there's a number of items that come to mind. The two that stick out in my head um, are horizontal curves as you move through the corridor, which I don't think will be an issue because we're pretty straight through here. There is mm -hmm. the one bend. Yeah, um, but more particularly, the vertical curves, the, the hills and valleys. Um, state aid does have... Um, the, the grade, um, you can't exceed a certain grade on a state aid route. And uh, without having that information at my fingertips, I don't know if that would change the ditch component. Because what I'm thinking about here is that if we go, th go forward with this project and at some point down the road, whatever time frame that happens to be, we decide we want to pave it, and then we go, oh, we have to redo the ditch work now because it's not up to speed for what's needed for paving. We'd have to kind of re re redo okay. the work again. Um, Madam Mayor, Council Member Molitor, this this would be a this is considered a ditch maintenance project, so we would be cleaning out the ditch and reestablishing those side slopes. I don't anticipate that any work done with this project would be of detriment to a future project in the corridor. I wasn't thinking detriment. Okay. I was thinking the other way around that. I assume that this, well, you've stated this now, that the standard of ditches in general, with your things about the vertical, or about the curb and the, the vertical, are higher standards for paved than they are versus gravel. <coughs> and so, such that, so let's just say we did this work next year, okay? Mm -hmm. And then five years from now, we're going to say, okay, now it's time we're going we're gonna to pave this road. Now, with that paving function taking place, are we going to have to then go through and redo some of the ditch work because the standard is higher now for the paved road than it is for the gravel? The changes that you could potentially see, for example, if we want to put an example out on the table, if you need to cut down the hill, the mm -hmm. high point of the road, um, if you did it with the ditch maintenance project, you, you could. Um, that is a change of scope with this project and requires some additional design work that right. I wouldn't recommend at this time. And I, that would be um, more appropriate with a paving project and, and looking at um, st st actual street improvements for this route. But I, I, I mean, I understand your concern, Mr. Melliter, but um, I think if you look at um, timing, this road is not on the pavement scope or on the horizon for probably another 10 years or so. And I think what um, Mr. Peterson, our superintendent, is trying to accomplish is less maintenance on this road. Well, I get it. I'm That's just, what, yeah. I'm just I, trying to think ahead. Right. Um, and it, I mean, and if we're going to do, an, the next road that we're going to do would have to be Sunnyfield. That has a lot higher tra ADTs right. than, than West Branch. Yeah, so maybe this so, 10, 15 years yeah. worth of life out of this project <clears throat> right. might be sufficient. Yeah. Okay. I just want to find out if what we would have to do above and beyond this. Yeah. So it sounds like we'd probably have to <coughs> do slope work, and then that expands the right of way and all that kind of stuff. So. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, I do have one quick question. How long does it take the board to make a change? A decision on the variance. Yeah. Um, we would anticipate action at on, at that meeting um, because we would be requesting a variance, so we would prepare. The, the steps taken would be um, we've allocated, I believe, eight hours in the, in the project budget to prepare the necessary information for the variance packet to the state aid board, variance board, and we would expect a decision at that December meeting. There, there's a chance that they might table it, but the intent is to provide enough information to the board that they would be able to make a decision at that meeting. Now, Ms. Falski, in your packet, it says um, an average of 300 to 749. So where where does the 300, so the 300 is on the lower end. Correct. Right, but we're, we're in that range. Right. 365. So anything over 300. You have oh, to they're saying anything over 300. Right. Okay, here it just says on an average. Okay, it doesn't, okay. So do we have any experience on 
variance requests? That's a great question. I, I did bend the ear of our district state aid engineer um, as far as, you know, what, what are we looking at an uphill battle here? Um, the feedback she provided was that if, if, the, if this road was slated for paving within the next year or two, it would likely be a pretty cut and dry um, consideration. Um, she didn't have any indication as far as what the state aid board would um, give any leniency when you're only 65 vehicles per day over that limit. So there, there's, there, I wish I had some more <coughs> examples um, to provide with the council as far as when the state aid board has seen this prior, but I, I didn't have any, um, any experiences to draw from. So Ms. Fowski, what we could do if they didn't give us the variance is we could actually use our state aid maintenance funds to fund this, or I'm not sure if it would cover it. But, so yeah. correct. So the state aid funding comes into um, is split in two different components. One is a maintenance component that the city gets that allocation every year. The other is a, is the construction fund, which um, I would liken to a, a bank, so to speak. Right. So every year, the city of Minnetrista gets additional state aid construction funds um, in that account. Um, to utilize for state aid eligible projects. So while you don't, um, you don't have to go through state aid approval for plans and specifications on the maintenance funds, the maintenance funds are already being utilized by the city and uh, it, within the street maintenance budget. And so to utilize the, street, <coughs> the, the maintenance funds for this ditch project, other, um, other work that um, is usually funded by that, those maintenance funds, we'd have to find an alternate funding source right. for that. But it's because it's coming out of the project fund that that triggers the need for all of these things, that the plans correct. and specifications, <laughs> the, the um, variance request, all of that. Um, so it certainly triggers the variance request. Um, it triggers state aid approval of the plans and specifications. Um, that being said, with the, the amount of work that is proposed through here, um, we would still have to provide some some plans and specifications for a contractor to look at in right. order to bid the project. Right. Yeah. So okay. there are a couple of extra steps that the, that uh, should the council proceed with this project, you would realize by using those construction funds. Um, but the, yeah. there is a large component of the work that would be necessary regardless of using the construction funds. Right. Okay. Right. Other questions? So we're looking at those first two line items just to do the variance, the, the request itself and the survey. Mm. Right. Correct? Correct. Right. I think it's a... variance is the first one. Yeah. To, so well, you have to do the survey, I think, as well. Do you yeah, know? we would have to do the survey because of the snow, because of the timing. That's correct. Right. But what happens if they don't approve the variance request? Um, if the... If, then it w I would bring that back to the council and indicate that we didn't get a state aid variance, if that's the case, and request direction from council as far as what direction would you like to go now. Um, but, the, um, but this topographical survey would already have been done, and we have to pay for that either way. That's correct. So the challenge is if, if, if I was coming to the council in <coughs> May or June, it, I wouldn't be recommending or requesting authorization for that survey work right. because we would have time to absorb, um, you know, to go to the state aid yeah. board and request the variance. But because of the time of year that we're in, um, to wait until after the state aid board variance board meets at the beginning of December. My concern is that we would have there's a, a high potential for having snow cover on the ground, and that we wouldn't get accurate survey information if we wait to get the survey information after that state aid variance board meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's at risk. But Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't get the variance and we did do the survey already, would the survey, um, the 5,300, um, would that be able to be taken out of our um, MSA maintenance fund? Um, construction funds are, el the, the eligible reimbursement is once a project is awarded. But could we indicate, I mean, so let's say the variance isn't given, so then there's no construction. Can we use the 5,300 as a 
maintenance, out of the maintenance fund? Um, I'd have to take a look. I'm not aware of any restrictions on u utilizing your maintenance funds for something of that nature. It's simply a funding <coughs> mechanism internal to the city. Okay, as I just, I'm trying to figure out if the project d doesn't move forward where the 5300 is. I would recommend from. it comes from the stormwater surface fund. That's why we're doing this. No. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's okay. True. Okay. <coughs> I, I just want to be clear as to where that. If it if it goes forward, it's kind of a slam dunk thing. Right. It comes from the MSA funding. If it doesn't, then we'd have to um, take it out of yeah out of the stormwater fund. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. All right. I guess I'm I'm uncomfortable spending five thousand dollars and not knowing if we're going to get the variance and just we just lose that money. Is that a, is that survey? Can we use it later for? Um, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, so the indication is that the ditch work is, is, is proposed to be completed because of the maintenance concerns. So the, the survey data would certainly serve the city well in estimating the, the quantity of material that would need to be removed with either a state aid project or without a state aid project. So I think the question becomes, if, if state aid, if we're unable to get a variance to use state aid construction funds, is this project going to happen? I, well, and that's the other question um, because we could take it out of MSA maintenance fund, or we could take it out of stormwater <coughs> fund, or a combination thereof, or our road fund. So, I mean, there's a number of different categories we could still take it out of. It's just a matter of, of budgeting. And I'm, I'm not so concerned about taking it out of which fund. I'm concerned about being able to use the topographical survey information itself that we're paying for. I, I think the answer, I mean, if, if we, I think the only time we wouldn't use it is if we decided to do the work internally and Gary's crew did it. But I think if you ever bid the project out, what, what you're saying is we'd need to have that to create the bid because we'd have to tell them, Okay, right. you're bidding on removing, you know, 190 cubic yards based on our survey. Now, the way the way I kind of a corollary I see to this is kind of like when we do our road projects with the paving cores. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a it's a little bit of it's kind of in the same price range, a little, probably a little bit more. But the paving core kind of, you know, you, if if you came, paving core came back and said all you need is a mill and overlay, you've kind of you didn't need the paving core, right? Because you're just going to do the overlay, whereas it tells you if you do need the reclamation, then, then it's it, it's kind of a little bit of a gamble in that respect, and it's the risk. Right, but it's it's necessary. It's necessary, and, and I think this is kind of the same thing that you know we've got to do that to know. Otherwise, no one knows what they're going to bid on. So it, it's going to come into play if we, if we bid this project out, regardless of how it's funded. Well. If, and if you were to talk to Gary, I think he would agree that the scope of this project is is such that I'm not sure that our staff would have time to do it. And I see no. him shaking his head. And I think that's why we're thinking about putting it out for bid. So that's why I'm saying whether we do it through MSA project money or we do it some other through some other fund. And the point I think is, it'll is get if done. We bid it out. We need this data. Yes. So the only way right. we can use it is if we didn't do the project Correct. or we did yeah. it in Correct. house, and we're not going to do okay. it in house. Yep. This okay. is money so lost only if you don't do it. If you don't, do that's what I was trying to get. Is, yeah. 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 Can we use this? Yes. Yeah. In the future. Yes. That's all I was asking. Yeah, we can. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so another question. If we don't get the variance and we still proceed and we take it out of whatever maintenance, now do we have still have an issue with spending capital dollars to not limit the money we're given? Because that's part of what this was all about. We're at the threshold of going over that dollar limit, and I know we got the Halstead, but mm -hmm. we're losing 
right. potentially losing this piece. So right. do we have another thing we have well, to look at? Can, can I suggest that we cross that bridge when we get to it? Well, <laughs> as we're gonna get I just to, want to throw it out. We're going to get to that bridge really but quick. But hold on. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I, hold I, on. I, I think uh, maybe Al and Ms. Fowski, can you kind of shed some light? I think we'll be real close. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I recall correctly, and I can provide council with an update at the next council meeting, when we were looking at budget numbers for the mill and overlay of Halstead to bring down that construction fund balance, that we would um, we would bring that down to an amount where we would not be in danger of losing any of the the, the or taking a penalty is is I think how it should be phrased. Um, and that being said, we have had some discussions um, with future MSA projects being on Sunny uh, the one on Sunnyfield to further draw down on that construction balance. So perhaps I could work with um, Director Grimm as far as taking a look at that um, that state aid construction fund balance and how that would be could. Be, be potentially drawn down okay and then the other factor that we could do is right now we get about 25 percent of our allocation in msa maintenance fund okay maintenance dollars what we can do by the end of the year i think it's december 31st we have or december 15th whatever that date is we have to notify them and we could for one year we could up our allocation from 25 percent to 35 percent and so we could then in 2020 we could get uh, 35 percent allocated into the maintenance fund which would help to offset what you're talking about plus it would help us have more funds in there if we ended up doing it as a as a maintenance project versus a, a, a CIP I mean, is that fair that's correct madam mayor and, and perhaps that's some financial information that can be shared with the council at the next meeting and i will i will double check on this i believe um once you go from t anything over 25 percent of your allocation um triggers a reporting component for you that's use right of that. yeah that's so right. um so we need to have that discussion internally as far as what effort would that require to do yeah the reporting mechanism and and at that point are you you know are you better off taking the 25 percent? but that's certainly something we can look into okay and that could be something we could decide even at um, our december meeting kind of giving staff direction what we want to do since we only have one meeting in December? I believe so. so I think you're correct. In the, yeah. December 13th or 15th is the, the date that's sticking in my head as far as when the change can right. be made. Okay. Um, so we certainly have some, some time to con make those considerations. Okay. Is that a, a one-time, like a one-year change, or is that just ongoing? Um, so I you can make annually. the changes annually. So, we so you'd, have to apply, you'd basically have to make the request every year. Correct. Um, if I, I believe think it's if, ongoing, uh, yes. Yeah, so, I, so for instance, if if City Council wanted to look at doing a thirty five percent allocation to maintenance, it would stay at thirty five percent until there was another council action to change it back to twenty five percent or some other percentage. And that's why I was suggesting for one year we could. Ch if I'm not sure if this is the right um, avenue to go, but we could change it for one year. And then the following year, change it back to the 25. It's the uh, reporting um, part of it that maybe we don't want to do. I, that's that's the only thing. Correct. So we'll we can look at that then. Okay. But we hope they don't table it because their next meeting is December 12th. So right. and we don't have a meeting later in December. Right. That's why I'm saying we'd have to make a decision before we know. Right. Yeah, we could say if. Um, see, I think the deadline is December 15th for the, the 25 or 35%. And I think the, um, when is your hearing? Isn't that on the, the, 12th. the 12th? So we'd have a few days. So we'd have to decide prior to the hearing, if it doesn't get approved, do we want to do the 35 and then give staff direction on what we would like does that make sense we may not want to do it I'm just saying it might be an option we just want to look at okay. so all right so um, good questions so does that mean that at the next meeting we're going to have a discussion about what those reporting requirements are going to be yes okay. and I assume when we say maintenance that means things like mill and overlay. They consider that maintenance or not? 
I will have a, um, a. I will get the definition of maintenance funds for the council so that you have as clear a picture as possible as far as what's considered eligible um, under maintenance funds. Okay. And so also then, um, Mr. Grimm, if you could work with, with Ms. Falski and then also bring back any option, other uh, financing options, should the um, variance not be approved? Yep. Yeah, maybe maybe stormwater, I don't know. But. Yeah. And I ran quick numbers. I mean, the 25 to 35% really shifts the money by about 40,000. You know, instead of getting 300 and 100,000, you get 260 and 140. So it's not... It's not a world changing, you know, okay. or anything. And that's, <laughs> those are things we should, you know, sh should be looking at. Maybe it's not worth it, but sure. I'm just saying. It's just threw it out there. Yep. All right. Okay. Good discussion. Any, um, any other questions? Otherwise, is there a resolution to approve um, professional services? And at this point, we could actually just approve the state aid variance request and the topographic survey if you would like or you can approve the full amount um, dependent on the variance outcome I'll make a motion that we approve the full amount based on the variance outcome okay is there a second to that I'll second okay any further discussion hearing none all those in favor signify with aye aye, aye. all those opposed Motion passes 5-0. And next it's the uh, approval of the 2040 Miniaturist Comprehensive Plan. Mr. Abel. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, I'll be quick as we've uh, obviously talked about this recently. Just a quick recap. Uh, at the October 7th work session, the council had a s discussion and there was some comments uh, made uh, and suggested for change at, at that meeting um, that we talked with Eric Zweber. Uh, council agreed to make those changes. We submitted those to the Met Council for their review. They were good with all of the changes except for the uh, 2017 Parks CIP. Um, I did have a follow-up conversation with the council at your October 21st meeting to ask for some direction on what you'd like to do with those 2017 CIP items. Um, we could either leave them in or if we wanted to take them out and change them, that we would need to start over. Council direction was to go ahead and just leave them in there at this time, so we did not have to start the process over. Um, so with that, um, this this is then now just bringing back the the same resolution updated with uh, today's date to officially adopt the 2040 uh, Mini uh, Trista Comprehensive Plan update. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Abel. Any other comments? I know we've talked about this quite a few times, so all right. Is there a motion to adopt resolution number 14619, adopting the 2040 Minatrista Comprehensive Plan update? So moved. Is there a second? All second. Okay. Any further discussion? And all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. So good job. I know this has been a long process <laughs> so good to have it um, completed so s staff will move on to staff reports mr. Baroni uh, thank you madam mayor and city council just a few items to uh, bring up for <coughs> your for you tonight uh, just a reminder um, we are city offices are closed on Monday November 11th a week from tonight a week from today in observance of the Veterans Day holiday our next council meeting will be two weeks from tonight on November 18th and then off and on this year and then recently via an email request and I think most every council member has, has commented or said we should discuss nuisance or nuisance or the nuisance ordinance and so my proposal you, to you tonight is to bring that back sometime in the first quarter of 2020 to discuss it I think with our schedule such it is it is uh, between now and the end of the year with just a couple of council meetings um, I don't think we're going to have time uh, during those uh, work sessions I think it would be a good work session topic so so I didn't want to uh, just slough this off and pretend like I haven't heard the concerns from not only council members but uh, residents on this item 
Uh, we've discussed this before, but I think uh, it would be worthy of another go in uh, early 2020. So if the council is okay with that, we'll take a stab at it in, in uh, quarter one of 2020. And I think that's all I have. Mr. Okay. Grimm, I think, has got an item. Okay. Yeah, um, Madam Mayor and Council, so one of the items at our previous work session, we talked a lot of, uh, I think, yeah, with sewer and stormwater um, budgets, and then in turn we talked to some of our outstanding debt, and one of the uh, comments that came up was whether we could, um, our 2012 A bonds, which is basically half for the Highland Road project and half for, um, was for some sewer projects, whether we could... Uh, potentially pay off the portion of the sewer projects um, early and when the call date was, was basically I think the question. So um, that would be uh, February 1st of, of 2020 if we would want to pay the outstanding amount or basically do a partial call like we sort of you know did here recently with the uh, the Kings Point Road um, project. Um, it would be if we'd be, we'd be paying off the remaining 380000 of the sewer portion as of that 2020 date in addition to our regular $50,000 payment we make out of each of the buckets, the sewer and the, and the Highland Road Fund. And um, it would save us, I had Todd Hagen from Ellers run a, a report, it would save us about $39,000 over the remaining term of that portion of the bond if the council so cho chose to, to do that. You know, I think you know, we were looking at the sewer funding. There is fund balance avail available to do it if we wanted to. We have some other projects coming up here also. Um, you know, lift station work, I and I, etc. So I just wanted to at least bring that information back to the council and, and get the consensus. Because if we did want to do that, we could do it as early as, as February 1st, and we you know would probably bring a resolution here in the December meeting to say process this because there's like a 45 day window or something that you got to give notice to the bondholders, etc. So um, I wanted to at least biggest give the update on that. And uh, I know I think Mr. Muller was one that. Uh, brought it up as a, at least a question or, or a thought so uh, for the question on that um, since the first call date is February 20th or February 2020 <laughs> I assume there it's callable then anytime thereafter yeah that's the way it's um, period. so um, we wouldn't necessarily have to decide for February we could decide for the following August I assume it's so February correct August. Yeah, yeah if we wanted to do it so yeah if, maybe if it's something we just want to consider as we finish up the year here and in finalize our 2020 budget and maybe revisit in spring or I mean there's, there's a lot of different ways we can can look at it but I at least wanted to to bring back that um, that that was we thought it was an eight-year call date that's it's pretty standard on when we when we issue you know, bonds and, and it was the case on this one so. so yeah we can have that as part of our discussions sure okay. all right thanks all right any other staff reports madam mayor yeah, um, I'd just like to update the council. I um, intended to bring forward um, a discussion item, a proposal for a traffic study on Sunnyfield as we, as we start looking into uh, future street projects. Um, the school district had identified some uh, some turn lanes that they'd like to see on Sunnyfield and so on. Um, my the reason you didn't see it this evening is um, I wanted to. Um, indicate to the council um, this is looking at like between eight and twelve thousand dollars for a s traffic study and so I wanted to bring it to council under a discussion item um, knowing the uh, the estimated cost for a traffic study I didn't want to bring a proposal forward but would ask council for some guidance as far as um, how you would like staff to proceed with this if you would like to see um, see us go to talk to the school district about the 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 range of cost for a traffic study and if that's something um, is there a direction to look at a cost participation or something of that sort if there's any direction that the council can provide at this time um, on you know whether or not to proceed with the traffic study and if to proceed if um, you'd like us to talk to the school district about what the cost is through there so I'll just jump in as well here um, so mayor and council the reason we're here tonight without something as an agenda item versus what uh, uh, Ms. Falski is bringing up is the road on Sunnyfield Road, uh, the, the road project on Sunnyfield Road, we would not be doing traffic studies for turn lanes or parking if not, that if we weren't asked by the school district for those potential add-ons to this project. It would 
be for us at all. I mean, we would just reconstruct the road and do it our kind of our own way. Um, but they did ask about those things, and because they, they understood that this road was going to be reconstructed, uh, and as the superintendent indicated us in a meeting uh, nine months ago, he says I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. You know that. So, you know the what is it? What did you call it? The but for you know we would not be doing this but for the fact that the school district is interested in turn lanes and and parking areas. So my thinking was is that if they really would like to see that. I think maybe they should have some skin in the game on, on looking at paying for that. I mean, it'd be nice, I'm sure, for them if we paid for it, but um, it's a lot of money, and I, you know, I don't think we benefit at all. I mean, we I, technically we benefit because if, if if there are turn lanes and parking, you know, that would be good probably for the whole situation. But again, it's more for them. But it becomes a city issue if we never include those things. So. Well, do we have to do a traffic study? Do you have to do one in order to add the turn lanes? Is that why it would be done? It's recommended to do a traffic study so that you can... Um, see if it's warranted. See, well, take a look at the volumes. Right. And the, 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 so the volumes, so the, the length of queuing. Oh, yeah. And then um, also take a look at how, um, how, how quickly you can get folks to turn in through there so you can make sure that it's, it's long enough in there and you don't have um, a longer delay for mm -hmm. turning. But movement. you don't have to do it for the MSA funding. Correct. Okay. So I guess what I would say, just let the school district decide if they want to pay for it or not. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't I agree. think we should pay for it. No. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think. Yeah. And that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, I would just assume see the turn lanes, but if they want to do a traffic study, then they can pay for it. Okay. Thank you for the direction. Okay. And we don't even know if we're going to do turn lanes at this point. Correct. Because of the cost. So, okay. Correct. Well, I th okay. Where, where have we left this? Because this seems to have, like, it's being out in limbo land. So, I, because there was a discussion with the school board or superintendent a long time ago. Right. And we talked about turn lanes and parking and curb and gutter and probably a few other things and I thought there was some conclusion we had some price we had some a la carte pricing if you will on some of those items that was fleshed out so you know where where is this at in terms of decision because it, it seems like we've answered the questions and we should be able to move forward here I don't know that we have all the pricing, but Ms. Polsky? Madam Mayor, if I may, um, at the last discussion, I believe it was early August when we took a look at street funding as, as a whole, um, we did provide, um, as Council Member Molitor indicated, some, some high-level estimates for parking lanes and, and turn lanes. My recollection was based on that conversation is, um, as far as scope of the project for Sunnyfield, whether you add the turn lanes or you add the parking lanes, is are, are they warranted and, and is this the true cost? Um, so that was so. My takeaway from that meeting is the next um, the next component to answer those questions would be the traffic study because that would indicate, you know, where are the traffic lanes recommended? What or pardon me, the turn lanes recommended, and what length and so on. Um, and move forward based on, um, you know, taking taking into account the recommendations from the traffic study, if turn lanes are recommended, um, if you can accommodate the additional parking lanes and update the estimated costs at that time. I well, I think we should just basically have some estimates to and then meet with the but school we district. Have, we already have the estimates. I'm, I'm, no, I'm saying that's what I'm saying is take those estimates and meet with the school sure. district and say this is what we're estimating for the turn lane in addition and for the parking in addition and if you want to do a traffic study this is what it costs i think that's the next step certainly so is that on wsb <coughs> or on the staff or who's got that Pardon, I didn't. who's got that next step of me with the probably staff well, staff yeah we WSB. could certainly initiate yeah. that conversation with them yeah. okay. because i think it, from what i'm hearing tonight it sounds like we're kind of all in agreement that we'd like to see turn lanes there well, not necessarily. I don't know that it really matters to us whether there's turn lanes there. Well, it does. Well, that was what I was trying to say. I mean, I think it matters more to them, but I think it also matters to us. Right. So, yeah. It, I mean, it might be a better road if there are turn lanes there. Right, right. Well, and I, we haven't 
discussed it enough to come to a conclusion on that yet. That's my point. Is is it just to me? It seems like we've kind of stalled. Yeah. And, and I'd like to see us move forward here because it, this is an opportunity for us as a council to get a, a road project done that a lot of people use in the city and basically no additional funds out of the city coffers. This is, if we do this 50-50 like we've done on the projects, 50% would be paid by the school district, 50% would be paid by MSA. We don't have these kind of opportunities too often, so I'd like to move forward. Okay, but then to Ms. Bruce's point, we haven't discussed if we're in, if we're all in favor of, for sure, adding the turn lanes and then we're paying 50% of that. I think part of the turn lanes, you also have to consider how much traffic is coming the other direction. And you certainly don't need turn lanes, you know, because in on Sunnyfield, it's east-west, okay? <coughs> so you have traffic in the morning turning. In the afternoon, you have very little traffic turning in there. But and then in the morning, you, the yeah, you have very little traffic coming from the west going east. So I guess the traffic study could probably tell you how, how important are those turn lanes there. Well, the only thing is, is the turn lane is important so that people can get around them. You I think know. you just described the yeah. significance of the turn lanes. Yeah. Right, right there, you did it without a traffic study. So, I mean, we all have seen the traffic. Right. I mean, it's a matter of degree, but I don't think it's going to, I don't think there's going to be any <coughs> shocking news that comes out yeah. of this. So, it's... I mean, we can, I, I'm happy to have more discussion, but let's get the discussion going then. So then the question, I think, is when we talk with the school district, we say we would like turn lanes there, so we're willing to pay 50% of it. Um, here's the total cost. Here's the turn lane. So here's 50% of that. And then the parking would be in a, would be on their nickel, 100%, 50%? No, I don't see why this would be different than any other project. I think it would be 50-50, right? I mean, if this was a different neighbor, it wasn't the school district, it was somebody else, and we were putting something like that in, it would still be 50-50. Okay. But it's street parking? on Street parking. Yeah, it's parallel parking on the, on the road, right. Yeah, like That's what now, they're asking. Except it's, it's gravel now. Yeah. It would be paved. Right. Well... Yeah. Possibly paved, yeah. Well, I'm sure would hope we'd pave it. I mean, I, you would think so, yeah. Well, I'm not going to support it if we're not paving it. <laughs> it's stupid. It's already gravel. Yeah. It's a mess. Yeah. That's why we're looking at this. Okay, are we in favor of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they want to... Now, what if they say, well, we don't want to pay 50% of that? Then we don't either. Then then where are we at? We, we don't want the parking. But then I think, we, again, it kind of goes to the discussion we just had about the variance, I think then we bring it back okay. and we discuss it some more. But we don't, I don't want to guess what their answer is going to be. I, I, I think... Sure. Okay. We can... Yeah. I, I get know, your point. Sure. Back and find All right. We'll have the discussion. Okay. Um, just out of curious, curiosity, the school is on our same timeline. Having this project done, right? All well, we told them uh, a while ago that we would not be doing this project any sooner than 2021 which is why we're here starting this discussion mm -hmm. now. We know that it's going to take a while when you have two entities that right. have to agree to everything, and so including the final price and who's paying for what and what we're getting, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, we're that's why we're starting out not waiting until March, because right. otherwise yeah. we're losing all that time. Well, and then if we're <coughs> going to do this in 21, whether they pay for it in 21 or they pay for it in 22 or however they pay for it, they, they need to budget for it too. Right. So right. they're going to want to know this. Yeah. In advance, yeah, that's why I'm pushing yeah. the discussion now. Yep, absolutely. That's why we're here tonight to ask you. Okay, so staff will go to the school and ask and talk to them about the turn lane. Um, we would like to ha see that there. Mm -hmm. um, parking, I think, is up to them, um, and the study, study would yeah. be up to them as well. Okay, thank you. Is that? That's a great. Yep, that's excellent. Sure. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Parking's not. In exclusively up to them. We'll get their input. But I think we have to think, to, to Mike's point, I mean, I can't count the number of times we've had people on Marina Drive in our council chambers complaining about the parking right. Right, and it overflows to them. And, and so we need to think about this, not just Sunnyfield, but the surrounding neighborhoods. Sure. And so if they say no, we still have to have a discussion. I don't want to say it's all their decision. We all have their right. input, just like any other resident will take their input, sure. but we'll make the final decision. I think I think that's um, fair. All right. Um, 
So any other council reports? Otherwise, we'll move on to uh, staff. Uh, to uh, I'm sorry, staff reports are done, so we'll move on to council reports. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ms. Bruce. I just have the Mountain Fire Commission meeting on the 20th and St. Bonnie on the 21st. Okay. And I'll also be going to the LMC regional meeting. Okay. And Mr. Chumperland. Uh, next Pioneer Sierra Creek meeting it would be Thursday the 21st. So it'll be after our next meeting. So. Right. Okay. All right. And Mr. Molitor. Uh, <coughs> last LMC meeting, um, we approved a new dock configuration for uh, the Caribbean Marina. Uh, after three meetings, we finally got <laughs> We actually haven't officially adopted it. That will be coming up. But we've given direction to move uh, along with the third or fourth iteration that they presented. Um, that occurred as well as another uh, dock variance. It was much less controversial. So um, that, uh, that's all for them. I'll be going to the next meeting next week. All right. Uh, WCC, um, I don't know if they're having a November meeting yet. I don't think so because they're doing the annual tree lighting at Veterans Park uh, in Mound on November 23rd. It uh, runs from 4.30 to 6. And there's all kinds of great events. It's just really kind of a fun thing to do. And that's it. Okay. Um, Northwest League is next week, so I'll be attending that and get back to you. And then I'll also be attending the um, league, uh, the regional uh, League of Minnesota Cities meeting on the 14th. And I'll also be attending the Mount Fire Department meeting. And I've got a number of other meetings coming up that I'll report on next time. So with that, we are done with our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. I Mike think, beat me to that. All right. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you get that one. And um, Pam seconded that. Yes. So all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes by vote.